All right, now I do like this article. This one comes to us from Bloomberg.com. Uh, hacker finds a way to unlock Tesla models and start cars. And when I first saw this, I said, oh, there, you know, there's some very elaborate hacking scheme. And then I, I watched a video where a guy did it in about three minutes, and I was like, I could I could probably do that. It's it's just uh, well, it's it's done. It's something that you've complained a lot about, and it is Bluetooth seems to be the big problem here. Now hold on, yeah. you said Bluetooth? Yeah, I don't believe it. No, it's super secure normally. <laughs> you know, um, I was surprised at the simplicity of this attack. Yeah, the the, the way it's pulled off is really simple, and uh, I believe that really Tesla and Bluetooth are being thrown out here just to get clicks. Because mm -hmm. I think this would actually work with just about. It, it did say the, it, the proof of concept was on a Tesla, but they said any of the vehicles that use the what is it, the low energy Bluetooth, uh, yeah. in this case for like detecting yeah. the key fob. Well, are and even from... even the Bluetooth side, like technically this could work with other wireless technologies okay. too, because all he did was build a relay. So he he built a like a little IoT solution that would listen for blue, in this case Bluetooth signals, right? Uh, and somebody's Bluetooth signal, like on their car keys, it, it could extend out of like about 30 feet in some cases, uh, or it was the cell phone they were using, right? So your cell phone Bluetooth yeah. definitely get about 30 feet. So what he found was he could take this, this relay, this little IOT device and get it within 30 feet of somebody's keys. Which would be it pretty could easy to do. You know, you could be in someone's driveway potentially and, yeah. and do that. Yeah. Yep. And I, and I keep saying keys. I have to back up because it was the cell it phone, was the phone that was emitting yeah. the, the Bluetooth signal because he, he showed using the cell phone to unlock the Tesla and start the engine. So you get this IoT device within 30 feet of this person's phone. And then it is capturing the Bluetooth signal. It's not decrypting it. It's not modifying it. It's just capturing it and then relaying it. And then on his laptop, he had a receiver set up. And then, you know, it could relay it over TCP IP. So that was my question. It Does it need internet? to be over another series of Bluetooth devices or you no, could send that no. over over the web of a far distance? send it over whatever he wanted. Okay. Uh, and latency becomes an issue. Like Bluetooth does have a timeout, but it's, it's several seconds, more than enough for you to be able to relay it all the way over to wherever he is out in a parking lot somewhere. And there he had a transmitter, the other end of the relay. And it would transmit that signal to the car. So the car would say, oh, look, that, that device is right here. And I, it didn't say if he's had it set up two-way, but I imagine he would have it set up two-way so the car could talk back to the phone, you know, because you, you want full authentication. Uh, and at that point, he was able to unlock the car, sit down in it, start the engine, and go. So this isn't really a, a flaw in Bluetooth, and it's not really a flaw in the Tesla car itself. It's just the fact that wireless signals can be relayed without us knowing about it because they're wireless, right? Once it goes in the air, it's just gone. Now, Don, do you think this will impact the uh, opinions of these big tech companies that we looked at last week when they talked about, we should use this for passwords. We don't need passwords anymore. You just got to get your device close enough mm -hmm. and then, you know, it knows you're there and, and it'll log you in to, to things. Do you think to this everything. would probably be used in any kind of way like that? Never. Well, you know, there's there's a lot of kind of conditions that have to be met for this attack to work, right? And and for a car, I think it makes sense. Like if I see a Tesla and I see somebody walk up to it and unlock it with their phone, all right, now I know I've got a valid target, right? I can't see somebody walking down the street and saying, oh, you know what? I bet they use Bluetooth to unlock their laptop at home. Uh, you Not know, so now, but if that becomes the standard... Then you would yeah, so you know that everybody assume, right. that uses Gmail, you know, right. does that. And now I just have to go pick my target and get walk on their sidewalk. Yeah, I, I mean, you would you would have to know, it, you'd have to know the person. I I think when it when it comes to like if you see me at a Starbucks and you see me tap my phone to my my laptop, all right. So now you know I'm using my phone to authenticate, but you don't know my email address. You don't know what email service I'm using. So you you have to figure out that other stuff too. You have to like it could work in a targeted serve. attack. Yeah, like if you knew the person. Yeah, if I was yeah. like 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 you said, targeted. I'm profiling you. Yeah. You become my intended target for maybe you're a large, you know, yeah. a whale kind of idea. Ouch. Versus the the car is just a lot more visible. I think you know it, it's yeah. obviously a big item. It's really easy to spot when somebody's going to a Tesla. Well, plus it's and it's a well known fact that you know these cars do this. So you see someone yeah. with a Tesla, you go oh. Yeah, and what's so cool? I think no, oh, go ahead, go ahead. I think that you know this isn't a huge risk that most people need to panic about, but it, it is an eye opener. It's you know remembering that hey, my wireless signal can be retransmitted, 
can be relayed. It can be recorded. Uh, and we, I think we talked about that last week, right? Where Russia was recording tons and tons of encrypted data. They couldn't encrypt it now, but maybe they could, could encrypt it later. So somebody could be intercepting your Bluetooth signal now, holding the data and waiting for a time where they can decrypt it. And so that's a that's a real challenge we have with wireless devices. And, and at the time, Daniel, I, I think you said you you keep Bluetooth off on your phone. I do. And so you're you're like pretty protected from this. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and in this case, the person was actually, you know, able to start the vehicle and, and show them driving away. So, you know, we know it can it can go all the way with that. So what would be the fix here, you know, both short, short term and long term is that short term, it sounds like if you go back to the key fob and not use the phone, but is the key fob still just using Bluetooth? Well, so the, the, the key fobs usually don't use Bluetooth. They usually use either NFC or something else, something proprietary, right? Uh, because Bluetooth would require a battery that's constantly mm, getting okay. drained. And most of the, your key fobs just have like a CR2032 battery in them or something. They, they wouldn't be able to hold up to that. Uh, but also remember the, you know, the think about what a criminal would do if they, if they steal the Tesla, right? So they're in there, they got their laptop, they're relaying that signal and they drive off. Well, the moment they turn off their laptop or the moment they lose internet connectivity, they lose the relay. The car sees the key is gone and the car shuts down. Does it and shut down? In the meantime, I mean, mine, mine just beeps. I know. Like if I'm, you know, I'd, I'd, if I go in the store and leave my daughter in the car, you know, while she's, <laughs> no, while she's listening to the radio she's or She's only two months old. She, she's a teenager. <laughs> you know, she's like, I'm just going to listen to the radio. Okay, fine. But she says, oh, it beeped the whole time because your, the key was in your pocket. Yeah. You know, but the car stayed on. Does the Tesla... I mean, it's smarter than my car. Well, even even if it stays on, I mean, it's still fully traceable. Those The Tesla's phone yeah. home constantly. They have their own cell networks and stuff. So it, it's still not like they can really do anything with the car they just stole. Maybe get it to a chop shop and steal the, uh, I was about to say catalytic converter, but I guess the Tesla wouldn't have one of those. No, it does not. <laughs> the battery pack. Those batteries, on the other hand, are pretty expensive, I would assume. Yeah. 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 Right. And I'm, I'm trying to think of other things like parts you could steal off of a Tesla because so much of it's computerized that you can't even do that. You can't. Correct me like, if I'm wrong. Wheels, Teslas I guess. are expensive. <laughs> yeah, but but as he says, it's phone and home the whole time. So yeah, whatever we just, just you know, wrap it in tinfoil. It can't get That's out. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Drive it into a Faraday cage. That's it. Like Knight Rider, you know, right. like into the back of a. Like, <laughs> look Michael, at Peter what are we breaking doing? out Faraday cage. Yeah, yeah. look at me. I've seen. Uh, Enemy of the state. That's right. <laughs> who, who, who's the guy in that? Gene Hackman? Gene Hackman. Yeah, Gene Hackman has the whole Faraday cage thing. Uh, yeah, anyway, so this is an interesting one to watch, and, and it, it will be curious to see what the reaction is from uh, from the vendors, because I'm sure they're going to have to say something about this. By the way, Enemy oh. of the State, yeah. that's a Scott Brothers film. That's oh, another? Okay. Yeah. yeah, you can see the yeah. same kind they of... They got that, that gritty... That vibe. Yeah, kind of like... It's like the film isn't f totally developed. really enjoy their movies, got to yeah. be honest with you. You should check that out, Don. <laughs> if you enjoyed that segment, be sure to check out our entire podcast available in the playlist right here. And you can always subscribe to stay up to date with the latest tech news and other happenings in the IT world. Be sure to tune in every Thursday for new episodes. I hope to see you there.